Welcome back, everyone, to Double Dip Draft League. I am your lovely host, uh, White Loaf, joined, of course, by the impeccable uh, Cabral095. Yes, uh, we have had uh, quite a season of Double Dip Draft as it is, and now playoffs are here. And we have some insane first week matches of playoffs, honestly true a lot of heartbreak here a lot of very close matches and a lot of just absolute slobber knobbers slobber knockers each and every one of these slobber knobbers yes absolutely every single they one. slobbin on my knob oh, hold on a sec that's that's not safe for work hold on um yeah and it's something where you have to remember with how things turned out for the playoffs we had um a lot of the big players making it to this time in playoffs. You know, we have uh, Kemeth of the Nerdable Needle Kings, and we have Claire and Aurora all doing stunning this season. Uh, I think Claire went 5-2, and two, but Kemeth going 6-1 and one, and Aurora going 6-1. Six, six and one. We've got some really good talent uh, lined up here for this first week. It's true, and, you know, everyone who made it to playoffs, like, you know, this was, I think, aside from, like, Aside for Aurora and Kenneth, who, you know, like you said, 6-1, it was very close for everyone else involved, like, but everyone played very well this entire season. And, yeah. honestly, like, getting into playoffs alone is just a testament to how good each and every one of these players are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, taking a look at our first lineup here for today, we have Kemeth of the Ne'er Do Well Nido Kings versus Jason of the Hartford Honchkrows. Jason, of course, uh, having a good victory against Remedy in the not I was about to say last week, but uh, just before playoffs, allowing him to get in, uh, surpassing me, and I'm sad. But that's okay. I'm not. I'm not angry. I'm not, I'm not spiteful. I'm um, mad. <laughs> Absolutely not, actually. This first match is actually a really good match. Looking at the team lineup here of the Pokemon we have, um, I think they brought probably what is the best against what the opponent has to offer. Uh, I would agree. I would say, uh, based off of team preview, I think uh, Jason definitely has the advantage. You know, Urshifu is a monster. Yeah. Uh, Moltres is very scary towards most of the team, aside from Krussel and Tapu Lele. Um, Duraludon is a deceptively good Pokemon, uh, especially with Assault Vest. It actually deals with Tapu Lele pretty well. Yeah. Uh, can deal with uh, Arctazolt as well, but definitely not the ideal matchup, I don't think, just because our Arctazolt, I believe, does get Earthquake. I Although I could be wrong on that. Get Earthquake. Um, and then we do have uh, some other good coverages here. Buzzwell coming in. Uh, Buzzwell's just got a good moveset and good stats overall. It's just a good Pokemon to bring in. Yeah. The only thing that Buzzwell kind of struggles with is Tapu Lele and Alakazam, which are two Pokemon that Cameron definitely loves clicking buttons with, mm -hmm. uh, especially against that Urshifu, because, I mean, Urshifu is not going to appreciate a Dazzling Gleam or a Moonblast. Yeah, the the key with our Shifu though is basically its speed will just allow it to hit. I believe it outspeeds pretty much everything on uh, Kemeth's team, right? I believe Alakazam is actually faster with 372 speed, and our Shifu yeah. I think is 330 something. It says 322, you... but it just depends though uh, if that is scarfed or not. Yeah, uh, I do know that you know. One of the favorite sets is Scarf or Shifu as a late game sweeper, but you know, Cameron could be anticipating that having a Scarf on Alakazam or even a Sash, which is something just to keep aware. Yeah, definitely. As I believe, uh, looking over at uh, Chemist Team just real quick, uh, Alakazam I think is the biggest hitter as well as Ditto. Ditto is not a Pokemon to sleep on whatsoever. Yeah, Tapu Lele is also a monster, you know. There's a reason that when 
the move tutor moves were revealed, everyone was like, Tapu Lele is going to be banned day one. And thank God did not get expanding force. Yeah, that would have been insane if that thing got expanding force. But uh, I think we should probably get started here at this point. We've covered the teams and some highlights of them that they bring the offer. And again, you know, uh, Kemeth, of course, being the first in the division uh, one bracket and Jason being fourth place in division two so that's how the brackets work out essentially uh first to fourth fight uh same with the opposite side and the second to third fight and then second third fight crossing the brackets over from one to two, uh two <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this one started so starting off with the Salazzle versus the alakazam makes sense to switch out you don't know if that thing's scarfed yet or not and Frostmoth is a pretty safe bet. It's decently bulky, doesn't really care about anything Alakazam can throw at it. Um, Machamp, though, he's just going to shrug it off and no guard and Stone Edge. That's, that's going to do it. Yeah. Dynamic Punch is nothing. I be I think uh, Kemeth was uh, predicting some sort of potential switch out, if not just going ahead and aim for Dynamic Punch. It's, the confusion is just always nice as well. Yeah, I think, personally, he might have just been going for the Confusion. Uh, I believe it is a guaranteed chance of Confusion, so... Yeah. Never hurts to have that just, you know, on on there. He could also have been trying to sack Machamp, thinking that um, it would kill, yeah. just to get, like, a safe switch, but who knows. Uh, the Crustle... Uh, I don't know if I fully agree with the setup. I think Crustle should have actually been saved, just because... Buzzwall is bulky and it's not killing. Like you saw, like it hit all five rock, rock blasts, and it's only did about half. So, uh, but the Rolladon coming in, and this is what I was talking about. It can it can live at least one hit from Lele and just immediately kill it with Steel Roller. Get rid of the terrain. Honestly, such an amazing move right there. I actually really love that play. Yeah. Uh, so that way, Sucker Punch, you know, if needed, it's now there. It can be used. Okay. And speaking of her Shifu things, here he is. Yeah, he comes out for a bit here, deals with Ditto. Ditto go has, uh, does not Wicked Blow right out of the gate, and I'm not too sure why. I mean, you see your Shifu there, and you want that thing to be gone. Like, yes. as soon as you see it. Yeah. Uh, Jason doing a good job, by the way, here, pinning up uh, uh, Kemeth against the wall with only just Alakazam left at this point. We do get a Dazzling Gleam there, but this Wicked Blow, and there's that mm -hmm. Sash just yep. stopping him from you know, getting killed. Yeah, and this is the unfortunate one, because, uh, because I believe by this point, uh, we knew that or she, or Alakazam was no longer Scarfed, which means it was most definitely running Sash. Yeah. Uh, but even if that wasn't the case, uh, if you're facing that scenario, the best thing to do is to always just go for like the option that's going to be the safest. If you outspeed and you get a hit, there's no reason not to do U-turn, mm -hmm. uh, because now you know you outspeed, um, and you know you can win. Essentially, yeah. you know you can sacrifice your next Pokemon, and you just go back out into the Pokemon that outspeeds Alakazam and win. Yeah, and we do know that uh, Jason was running U-Turn on Urshifu there, and that cost him the game, honestly, because he put up a great fight, by the way. Fantastic match. Uh, this Absolutely, was, yeah. This was a really heated match to start off our, our playoffs, and again, Kemeth is down to one Pokemon at 1%. Um, Sash making the difference uh, with you know, Jason still having three Pokemon by the time Alakazam comes out. Yeah, no, I think both players did honestly amazing. Like, I I do think the Crustle is kind of the only thing that I would be like, I don't really see why you would do this in this situation. But at the same time, like, other than that, this match was honestly probably my favorite match of this week. Yeah. 
it's just a really good match and i think it's something that really helped kemeth stay on his toes because uh we're gonna have to see who he fights afterwards in his bracket i believe the next person in the bracket uh that we'll have to see who would he would have to face is idm or sound or spood sorry forgive me well wow. old habits old die habits hard, die hard. <laughs> yeah <laughs> me and you we're like this <laughs> yeah absolutely um, but yeah, so we're gonna have to see how, uh, how Spood and IDM do in order to see who gets to fight off Kamath for the chance for third place or fourth place and see who gets to move on to the finals after that. Uh, we do have another True. match though. Uh, yeah, right that's, after that's future. Before. Right now, it's Scoots and Aurora. Yeah, what teams are they part of, by the way? I wasn't paying attention to that part. I don't, I don't remember. You don't actually remember? I don't remember, you remember uh, team names. Scoots of the Dumblespoots Army and Aurora of the Heart Haunt Haunted Man. Nope, hold on. Honesburg Haunters. There you go. <laughs> Do you know how many teams start with an H in this division? There's a, a lot. That, the this Hatchet is why I stopped trying to remember. <laughs> There's the Honesburg Haunters, the Haunted Mansion Gengars, the Herleen Haluchas, the Hartford Haunchcrows. Um, I think that's actually all of them, but that's still a lot of H's. Yeah, like, I, I'm so bad at remembering like team names. I don't. I half the time forget my own team name. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's completely fair. Nicholas of the Loafville Lanterns. Wow, you dropping my full name? All right, uh -huh. Andrew. <laughs> there we go. All right, <laughs> now that you all got that out of the way, uh, what are some Pokemon highlights we have for these teams? You know what? That Porygon and that Slowbro all season, honestly, have been such a such a good duo for Aurora. Yeah. I mean, it's such a good, like, it's just such a good wall combination. You know, you have your your physically bulky Slowbro. You have, you know, Porygon 2, which is just bulky in general. Even without Evil Light, you know, this thing can still kind of shrug off some hits here and there. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's not exactly ideal, but, you know, it is there. And then coupled that with, you know, Zarud as well, actually having pretty good special bulk. And this is a very fat and scary team to go up against as well. Absolutely. And even then, Crobat's not one to uh, to kind of shrug off either. Crobat's got stupid speed and it can hit hard. Oh, yeah. Uh, that being said, Scoots has monsters. He's got Heloisk, which is honestly a sleeper hit, honestly, in terms of like wall breakers. You have Pangoro, you have Scizor, you have Spectreer. Uh, you know, this thing, this thing just fucking eats. And granted, though, Porygon 2 can sit on it. Uh, the only move that I think Spectreer has is like a small handful of something like, you know, Dark Pulse or yeah. even like a like a weird normal stat, kind of thing normal that's actually type attack. The missing out on is uh, actual good move selection. Now, to be fair, though, with what it does have, it does fantastic, but it does not have the biggest move pool. But even without that move pool, Spectreer hits like a truck. Oh, yeah. Honestly, this thing was only banned purely because of its special attack stat. Like, you know, this thing can just mop up teams if you don't have a normal type yeah what is its base special attack by the way do you know off the top of your head or have a rough idea? i do not remember i remember it being high and that is it <laughs> i probably looked that up real quick but yeah these are the teams um, honestly looking at the matchups here uh this is this is one of the big matches of the season scoots of course uh and aurora both being uh you know multiple returners from other seasons aurora i think uh if I've heard correctly, maybe I shouldn't say that. I think she won one one time, but I know they've gone to playoffs before these two, for sure. I am almost, I'm almost positive Aurora has won this, uh, you know, this 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 sort of match before against Scoots. However, you know, Scoots is a very talented player. I think he has made it to playoffs in every season of Double Dip Draft. He's yet to win. Um, he has yet to win, but. Maybe maybe this is the one. Who's I mean, to say? We'll have to definitely sit down and watch. Yeah, by the way, Spectreer with 100 HP, which is insane, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. 145 special attack, 130 speed. Yeah, and not only that, but because of its ability, every time it gets a kill, that special attack goes up by one. Yeah. So, uh, so let's go ahead and start this fight. This is, again, one of the big ones as we get started here with Feeny coming out to start to uh, do some scouting, getting out that misty terrain. Mm -hmm. Switching right out of the uh, Victini, don't want it to take any sort of chip at all. And we now know that this is 
Nasty Bat. If you don't know Nasty Bat, Crobat actually has a decent special attacking move pool, and it does get Nasty Plot, hence the name Nasty Bat. And alongside that Heat Wave prediction on the Scizor, honestly such a godlike play. Absolutely. Good Volt Switch right there by Scooch, though, to take out Crobat. That's a big hitter of uh, Aurora's gone right here. Right here coming up, probably going to set up rocks. Yep, there it is. Yep. Uh, Aurora opting to set up a Iron Defense and a Calm Mind. Which means likely we're probably going to see a Sword Power. Yep, there it is. Yep. Not the worst, but, you know, dev definitely needed Heloisk a little bit lower before attempting that. Zarude, though. This Pokemon that is a makes... monster when it hits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it makes sense for Scoots to stay in with Heliosk on that thing, because Heliosk, at that point, you know, you really don't want to bring anything else raw into uh, monkey business, because uh, it's just going to die. Yeah. I am surprised that it lived and that Aurora would keep this thing in, and I'm also more surprised at the Assault Fest, honestly. Yeah. Um... I don't think Assault Vest is a bad choice per se, but I think there were so many more better options than AV. You know, Choice Scarf, you know, if you keep this thing healthy enough, regardless of whether or not Spectre like, outspeeds it or not, it can live one hit, usually. Um, and, you know, you also get the added benefit of possibly being able to outspeed it, especially because... Scoots is Nasty Plot and Substitute, and now we get into kind of, <laughs> kind of the stall fest. Yeah. Honestly, I, I I don't mean to spoil the match, but I mean, that disabled, yeah, we're gonna, though. yeah, that disable. Honestly, this Spectre set is a very good counter to Porygon too, which I feel like is the main reason Scoots made it, yeah. because Porygon two is kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. for Scoots to deal with. He has Pangora, which is kind of the only real answer, but, you know, there's no reason for Aurora to stay in on Pangoro. Yeah, there there really isn't. And again, the thing is that's, uh, that's even bigger. We just saw Tri-Attack back there a little bit, and we know now all of Porygon's 2's moveset, which is Power Swap, Foul Play, Tri-Attack, and Recover. Tri-Attack does not hit Spectreer, which becomes a problem, because then Scoots can just disable, of course, uh, Foul Play. Which mm -hmm. means that Porygon 2 cannot sit on Spectreer too long, because it can't hit it. Yeah, and that is kind of the main problem here, is that, you know, Porygon 2 just can't touch Spectreer. It can use Foul Play, then it gets disabled. And Porygon 2 does get some, you know, decent special attacking moves that could hit Spectreer, especially because uh, Spectreer, like, while it does have 100 base HP, does not have the highest defenses. No, doesn't. I mean, you know, uh, Porygon 2 gets, like, Ice Beam, it gets Thunderbolt. Like, any of those moves with Power Swap would have been pretty decent. Uh, I understand the idea of running Tri-Attack for additional stab, and what we think it's running Analytic here, right? Yeah, so it's most likely running Analytic, and you get the additional stab, and Tri-Attack does have the added benefit of a... I think it's like a 20% chance of either a Paralysis, Burn, or Freeze. Yeah, which is good. Not against Spectre. Yeah. Uh, I actually really think that Shadow Ball was honestly the play here. Like, yeah, you are kind of, you know, foul play, you're, you know, Shadow Ball, you're, you can't really touch Pangoro in that situation. But at the same time, I don't think you want this thing to attempt to touch Ban Pangoro anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is just kind of going nowhere because this is just kind of like a pattern. Scoots is still able to get up as many nasty plots as he wants for the most part set up a substitute, and just kill whatever Pokemon comes out against him. Yeah, and it works out pretty well. Again, it's something where Aurora's been struggling uh, with this uh, stall game here because uh, she really doesn't have an answer to the Spectreer. She sends out Victini, it's just going to die to Dark Pulse. Slowbro really cannot sit that long on it because Dark Pulse will kill it. Rotom Fan doesn't have any health left, and it's just going to die as well. Mm-hmm. This is, yeah, and this is like another like problem is that like Aurora has 
almost no speed control. I think the only Pokemon she had that was faster is, I think, Crobat. And I don't even know if that thing is faster, honestly. Um, it Spectre might be. speed is 394, so it would actually be a speed tie, assuming they're both max speed. Yeah. Let me see Crobat speed real quick off the top of my head. On oh, my phone. Not top of my head. Uh, on my phone. Um, cause Your head looks suspiciously like a, like an iPhone. Absolutely. That's weird. Um, yeah. yeah, they're both 130 speed. Yeah. So, absolutely. Um, and we see here, by the way, Scoot's getting the, the sweep there. Getting up to four... Uh, four times special attack, which is pretty good overall. It was just something where at that point, Aurora did not have any consistent way to take out Spectre. Bringing Disable was a really good call on Scoots' part in order to counter what Aurora was bringing. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of shut down Porygon too, especially since you know it didn't have any other moves that really hit uh, Spectre with. If it had um, any other move, the disable plan would not have worked. Honestly. I yeah. I also think that honestly a choice scarf, like, it should have been somewhere on this team, or even like even like a trick room sort of scenario, you know, because you got you got both Porygon 2 and Slowbro. They both can set up a trick room and yeah. you can do some fun shenanigans that way. But I I do honestly think that this was one of the situations where you unfortunately lose a team preview, but not because, just because like the team itself was not optimized against it, from what I, f yeah. I, I feel at least. But it's also something, you know, you have to remember that like, it's hard to really know what your opponent's gonna bring in a how. Although it is- Oh no, it absolutely is. I, I can't, I can't like blame it. You know, this could have, you know, Aurora probably, you know, Aurora made the playoffs and I didn't. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that that's telling enough. Aurora also went six and one, so she clearly knows something that I do not. Obviously, yeah. Um, uh, and you know, I'm sure she had setups for many different things that Scoots could have brought instead. Counterpoint to what we just said, though. Absolutely, Aurora should know Spectre is coming and should know you have to hit it with something. And it seemed like because there were around what five, four or five Pokemon still when Spectre was out, and none of them really hit Spectre hard. It seems like. Yeah, I mean, again, I feel like Crobat and Zarud were kind of your best options. If Porygon 2 had Shadow Ball, I do think it would have won yeah. at the end of the day. Um, foul play, you know, honestly, the more I think about it, like, the only reason I can see foul play is Scizor. Yeah. That is, that is the only reason I see foul play being used. And even then, honestly, like... I still think Shadow Ball is probably a safer bet. Yeah, I can completely agree with that. And even then, like looking at the the team makeup and everything again, like you know, th Ice Beam, th Flamethrower, something else, any any other special attacking move would have just made yeah. a difference. Because again, Power Swap was there. That additional uh, boost to special attack would have just made any sort of difference, no matter the move. Honestly, any ninety power based special move Porygon could learn would have still just hit it super hard. I agree. And I do love the power swap play, honestly. I think that is a amazing idea. And Absolutely. I'm I'm sad it didn't uh really go anywhere, but you know, she just couldn't hit Spectre Year. Yeah. And with that, Aurora is knocked out of playoffs with Scoots moving on. Uh we get to see who Scoots fights next. Coming up in our next match, we gotta see who wins between Quit Quare? Hold on. Between Claire, <laughs> the Maryland Electrics, and Spoopman of the Herlene Howluchas. Sound, that sounds kind of sus. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, you, you you got you got very close towards uh towards something there. You might want to edit that one. Absolutely, it's queer. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, right, what a matchup we have today with these two. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Jason, you know, he's got a scary team. He's got a bunch of hard hitters. You know, Gyarados, you know, it's never the best Pokemon, but it's definitely not a Pokemon you ever sleep on. 
Crocodile, same boat. Tapu Bulu is awesome. Yeah, great. Uh, Dublade. Uh, Dublade should be cool, but I feel like it never works out whenever, you know, I see it. But, you know, Dublade is UU for a reason. It, yeah. It's still very good. It has UU. Couple that with... Yeah, a couple of that with Skarmory and Araquanid. Both very good walls. Skarmory, great physical. Araquanid, great special wall. Mm -hmm. But Claire, I mean, she's got Comfy, a Pokemon that we've seen just decimate entire teams. Yeah, who thought she's this got little, uh, a necklace Pokemon would just kill. Yeah, she's got Tyranitar, which, you know, it's been on the back burner as of late, but Tyranitar is still a scary Pokemon. You, you know, you always need to be ready for that sort of thing. Escadrill, which, you know, you keep, you have that thing paired up with Titar. Yeah. I mean, honestly, Escadrill by itself is already scary. Mm -hmm. um, Chandelure is a good answer for quite a few Pokemon. I think that Jason has, by the way, being Fire Ghost type. It handles Skarmory pretty well, as well as Dublade and, of course, Bulu. And it's just a good ring, I think, too. Oh, yeah, no. I think Chandelure was you know, a very safe pick. Like, this is a Pokemon that, if you didn't bring Chandelure in this match, I mean, you're in crack. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Like... <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and watch uh, this, uh, this match here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get it started. Yeah, let's see uh, what goes on. Starting with Rotom Wash, good call overall, honestly. Uh, only thing that mm -hmm. really hits it is Bulu, but, you know, getting the burns off early is a really good call. Oh yeah, the burn on Bulu is very nice. Uh and we get, you know, Clef Key, the Boo Boo Keys. <laughs> um and Prankster Boo Boo Keys is always going to be annoying. But we also got screens, which I think is a safe pick. Brick break for the screens is also really smart. Yeah. Um really I don't I, yeah. Vincent getting a good read there, by the way, on that draining kiss, switching over to Cabral Jr. over here, which is dub blade. I mean, I think that's a safe pick, honestly. Like, I, yeah. you don't want this thing to start setting up or getting big damage on you. Uh, now, this one, this play I actually don't agree with at all. You're not killing this thing from full with an earthquake. You, yeah. you know, you should have gone for a knockoff, or better yet, you should have switched, because I don't think you would have killed this thing from full anyways. Because yeah. even then, th this thing's probably running Eviolite. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think that's kind of when the match is, like, that. that's a very pivotal moment. Like, it's not decided, but that's, that's gonna hurt. That, that makes this a very big uphill battle for Claire now. Yeah, it definitely does. That Miracle taking out keys really also made a difference as well. Mm-hmm. Because now you've lost your screens and your sand setter. Yep. Uh, and now Claire just isn't really making, like, predictions at all. Um, she's just kind of clicking the buttons, like, at, like, she's just kind of clicking buttons wildly. Yeah, it kind of seems she, that way at the moment. Yeah, like, she's hitting what's in front of her, and, like, don't get me wrong, that's not a bad uh, thing to do, but you have to be able to make those predictions sometimes. You can't just, you know, click what's in front of you always. Yeah, Claire's been kind of back into a corner at this point. Vincent, again, bringing his all, doing really good in this match right here. We just lost uh, Excadrill, which is kind of unfortunate. I think one of Claire's biggest hitters on the team. Um, you know, Soul comes out, but it doesn't hit this uh, dub blade at all, really. Yeah. Chandelure coming out. Yeah, I do I do agree with this. This is kind of the only thing that can really deal with this, and you need this Pokemon gone. Yeah. Uh, in order to open the way for Comfy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going to Protect makes sense there, uh, but it's something where we quickly realize here, this Bulu is Scarfed, and it outspeeds this Chandelure, which is really unfortunate. Mm-hmm. I actually, I don't agree with that. I think Claire should have actually set up on that on that turn there. Get up a Calm Mind, because I don't know if Bulu would have been able to kill uh, with a Burnt Wood Hammer. Gotcha. 
Uh, probably would not have killed it. No, but it's something where Calm Mind probably wouldn't make too much difference because, again, we see Gyarados come out here. Uh, a lot of the Pokemon that are left on, J on Jason, Vincent's team are physical attackers. This is true, yeah. But I feel like it would have been a bit safer. Of course, there was also a crit there, and... I mean, yeah, it... I don't think it would have made that much of a difference, but it would have it would have done something at least, I think. Yeah. But regardless, uh, Vincent, not Jason. I don't know why I said it was Jason it's earlier. Okay. I, 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 I don't know why. I kind of get them mixed up too. I don't know what it is or why, and I yeah. apologize. But uh, maybe it's the names of their teams with Hurley and Haluchas and Hartford Honchcrows or something. But Soup just strikes me as a Jason person. Uh, yeah. But yeah, of course, Vincent here taking home the victory and moving on to fight Scoots in the next match. And that's going to be a really exciting one to see. Of course, Claire, who had an amazing scene, is doing really good after a few years off, uh, coming back to do great, to make it the playoffs. And if you make it the playoffs, good on you. And she put up a hell of a fight and did really well. Yeah, Claire did amazing this season. I would actually say that this is probably her worst game, honestly. Uh, every one of her matches, like, you know, Claire has shown like a very in-depth understanding of Pokemon and you know has shown that she is still good at the game but this one I don't know what it was I I, I just I think maybe she just wasn't on her game this day which is unfortunate but you know that that is just sometimes how it be uh but Claire still did you know a ver a very good job she didn't do a bad job this game no. either like you know like that that, that that's that, that's worth being said you know she did not do a bad job she just didn't do a good job either yeah you know it was just a very neutral lukewarm pokemon match for claire yeah because it's something to you know you have to remember as we were saying earlier these people have made it to playoffs and they're pulling their all and they to get here in the first place they are good players these are not bad pokemon players at all yeah every single one of these players are extremely good and have made very good calls. Have they always made the best of calls? No, but yeah. none of us do. Yeah, we're, you know, everyone's human. Yeah. We're not all Pokemon. You can't just... I, I don't know where I'm going. We can't just one. be told to use Shadow Ball and use Shadow Ball. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and speaking of Shadow Ball, I don't think there's one in this match. Who's this match coming up here, Nick? This is Spood SSBM versus IDM4. Spood, the coach of Southtown Sand Slashers, and IDM, the coach of Brussels Espions. Yeah, yes, Espions. Brussels Espions. I remembered two people's team names. Are you proud of me yet? I am absolutely proud of you. Uh, and how could I, I totally didn't you? look it up. You totally did not look that up, as you should. Did not look fair. it up. Um, yeah. So, it's a. This is another really good match. Another big match. This is going to determine who gets to fight Kemeth, who is Spood's twin brother. And again, mm -hmm. if we have brother against brother, what a match! But to be fair, IDM of course is going to bring some heat to that match, even if IDM moves on. But this match alone is a good match. Both of them having very good seasons. IDM actually having a couple bumps this season in the road. Uh, losing to Firebolt one match, and I think someone else in another match, but I can't remember who. Was it Kemet? No, it wasn't Kemet. It was, um... Uh, who was it? Claire? Did Claire beat IDM? I think it was Claire. Yeah. It, either Claire or it was Kemet. It was one of those two. I think it was Claire. Um, yeah. either way, though, like, IDM, one of the best. A very good player. I mean, yeah, IDM is... I mean, even even if the results don't always match up, IDM, I think, is still the best player in the league, honestly. On that's not to say that... Yeah, on, on consistency. Um, that's not to say that, you know, any other player is, like, worse than IDM, per se. It's just, like... You know, you can still be really good and lose to someone common. Like, you know, like... You know, I've heard IDM's implanted a Pokédex uh, in place of part of his brain. I would not be shocked, uh, except swap out Pokédex with a Pokémon calculator. Absolutely. Dude, yeah, he just he just side. has an innate knowledge. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, Cody Spood uh, is also a very good player. You know, he's won, I, th I think, the first DDD. 
L? Yeah. Or we it might get our facts straight at some point. Them. We'll get paperwork sometime soon. For now, there's no paperwork in front of us to find out the actual stats. One day I'll actually take like notes on like wins and stuff and like have them like ready. Yeah. Um, but for now, I'll just you know guess and be corrected in the comments section and never look at the comments section. There you go. Let's let's go ahead and do that. But <laughs> looking at the team lineup, we see IDM bringing his Reggie Lecky, which is I believe at the moment the fastest Pokemon you can get, right? Yes, Reggie Lecky is the fastest Pokemon. I think the only Pokemon that outspeeds it, and I don't even know if it outspeeds it, is Deoxys Speed. Yeah. Um, but Deoxys Speed also is really only good for setting up spikes, so... <laughs> yeah. Is Deoxys banned? I mean, it's Ubers, yeah. It is Ubers? Okay. Yeah, but I don't think Deoxys is uh, in this generation anyway, so... Ah! That makes more sense. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Palisand, of course, we see bring, coming back. And Palisand's a great Pokemon. That Ghost Ground combination does a lot of work. And it's got some great bulk, uh, some good attacks, and uh, coverage for itself. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely very useful against Spoot's team, which, you know, he's got some electric core going on. He's got more Pico. He's got Alone Raichu. He does also have a Pinchurchin, but he did not opt to bring it this time around. Yeah. Um, which, you know, makes sense. You don't want to boost a Regieleki. Uh, beyond. Yeah, because Cody or Spoo does not have any electric, any really good electric resist. Like, Alone Raichu is right there, or Pico is right there, but honestly, they're not bulky at all. Neither of them appreciate any hits, especially yeah. from a Pokemon like Regieleki. He does have a Tangrowth. Uh, he did not bring it, of course, and that would have resisted Aleki, but it's also something we're bringing. Tangrowth is... It's kind of a risk, because IDM has a lot of Pokemon that can hit Tangrowth. Yeah. Um, that being said, IDM did not actually bring... Anything that could really hit Tangrowth aside from oh. Excelgor and technically Savali, because Savali could be, you know, anything. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what that is. But of course, Cody bringing his Melmetal, I believe he's brought it to every single match, which makes sense. Melmetal is an absolute tank. I mean, yeah, like, you know, you bring this thing in, you click double Iron Bash, and something either dies or comes close to dying yeah absolutely and of course bringing reg eyes who's been another really key player for cody's team as it is uh reg eyes uh just taking hits all day with its 200 is it special defense yes 200 special defense which is definitely going to be useful against that regieleki palisand extelgor whimsicott oh, uh, not Cobalion. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. I'm sorry, that's the skip. No, you're right. Uh, potentially Savali, depending on what it is. Yeah, potentially Savali, although most people typically run Savali physical because yeah. its signature attack is physical, and I think its physical move pool is just better in general. Yeah. Uh, Cody bringing Driftblim, though. I think this is the only second time he's brought it. Driftblim is a interesting Pokemon. I think... I mean, it, it does get unburdened, which, you know, that's always nice. Um, it get has it has decent special attack. Yeah, it has Hex. It can spread Will-O-Wisp, which is always nice. Um, it does also, I believe, get another ability called Flame Boost, which I think is actually exclusive to Driftblim. Mm. That, if I remember, it ups the special attack of your moves if you're burned. It's kind of like guts. Okay. Uh, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that, but I'm I'm pretty sure. Actually, if you right mouse now. over it. Mouse over Drift in front of you real quick. Uh, uh, flare, boost. flare boost. That's it. Yeah. I think I think that's what that does. Okay. Uh, and more Pico, by the way. I think Cody's brought to every game, uh, if not one of them. But, like, more Pico does a great job with Oriole just being a great move with this Pokemon. Mm hmm. Yeah, that Oriole, I think, will definitely become pretty useful. You know, when it's electric, it can hit Cobalion pretty hard. When it's dark, it can hit Palisand hard. Uh, plus, that speed boost, that's always nice to get. Yeah. Especially with uh, Morpico's like already like pretty decent speed. 
Uh, but I think that's enough uh, talking about the teams themselves. Let's say we get into this match. Yeah, let's get into this last match here with the start of Reggie Alecki, which makes absolute sense. Doing I mean, Thunder yeah, cage. like, yeah, you just click Thunder Cage, you hit something extremely hard. Uh, I do like the sticky webs, but Reggie Alecki, you know, does get rabbit spin and nothing is going to outspeed it, so. Yeah. Yeah. That You're not going to have to deal with that for though, long. So, kind of unfortunate, but you know what? That's okay. That's how it is sometimes. I mean, Reggie Lecky is the blood god of this game. He comes in, you sacrifice something. So honestly, getting rid of it early on, I think, is really good. And as nice as Slurpuff is, I don't see it doing too much to IDM's team. Yeah, if I remember in Cody's team building, I believe he said he only brought it for sticky webs, and that was the, the purpose of it. Also, we do see uh, IDM bringing a fire Silvalli. Mm -hmm. which is honestly a very good call. Not really a lot of good fire resist on Cody's team. Yeah. Except for the um, fire Pokemon he has, but he didn't bring them. What fire Pokemon does he have? Uh, he has Incineroar and Talonflame. Oh, Incineroar actually would have been great. Well, no, Palisand. Yeah, Palisand. Yeah. No problem. And uh, Kabalion. Never mind. You know what? I see why Incineroar didn't come. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we do see, by the way, uh, some good work being put in by Drifblim here. Mm hmm Yeah, I think Drifblim is honestly, like, a pretty decent Pokemon. I think, honestly, if it had a little bit higher special attack, probably, it would actually be a lot better. Yeah, probably would be. We do see a Sunspore hitting, which is really unfortunate. Uh, that's really gonna affect how Drifblim does in this game. Yeah, especially with the light screen up, there's not a whole lot that Driftbloom can really do. I do like the Strength Sap. Uh, I think that is actually a very smart yeah. uh, play there. But Strength Sap and getting off burns makes a, a lot of sense. Very unfortunate with that paralysis we just got because that would have been a Strength Sap and that would have helped out uh, Cody recover some health. Or but... it could have even been a Hex and done some really nasty damage to Absolutely. Palisand. Absolutely, yeah, because it outspeeds it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do see Al Gore over here getting some uh, flinches in with Fake Out. Great call. Uh, fake Out's a great move to use. Uh-huh. Uh, trying to get rid of the spikes, but IDM does block it with uh, Palisand. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just a scout to see what kind of move IDM goes for. Not often to uh, take the Scorching Sands. I don't think more Pico would appreciate that. Yeah. Frost Breath, of course, killing our uh, Whimsicott over here. Mm hmm. But this is kind of where, you know, it starts becoming a bit of a problem because Cody, or yeah, Spoot is losing just a lot of Pokemon, and IDM, you know, he's winning all these trades that he needs to. He's still got Kabolion, which That's living at 1% is very unfortunate. Um,. You know, the permafocus ash is always present, whether it's a Nuzlocke or, or a competitive playoffs match. Yeah. Uh, that was not a sash, though, was it? No, I... Just roll the dice. Yeah. Hence the permasash. It's always there, just lurking in the shadows. Yeah. Uh, very unfortunate here, because, you know, Cody's down to one Pokemon. Goro hits hard, like, don't get me wrong, like, this right here, that unfortunate Culberberry did save, uh, Palisand's life. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, it would have been able to kill Savali. It uh, might not have mattered, but... I mean, Savali's at 72. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know how strong Morpico is. I know it's, like, decently strong, but, like, I don't know if it's strong enough, per se. Yeah. Uh, but... That match was kind of a little bit more unfortunate. I think the paralysis was kind of big. Yeah, uh, also whether the 1% it was... on Cobalion, I think, made a big difference, too. Yeah. I mean, the 1%, I don't think it would have mattered too much now that I think about it, just because I don't think um, Melmetal would have been able to outspeed Palisand, and Palisand could have just killed it Yeah. Uh, before it got an attack off. Um, But the paralysis on Drift Blim. I think that they kind of make the difference in the grand scheme of things. Uh, it kind of depends on what move uh, Spood went for. Mm -hmm. If he went for Strength Sap, I don't know if it would have made that much of a difference, but he, if he went for Hex, uh, Morpico still would have been able to kill despite the Culberberry with Aura Wheel. 
Yeah. That, uh, that's definitely true. Uh, by the way, shout out to IDM for finally nicknaming his Pokemon. Don't know if you've noticed. Uh, they are all actually nicknamed. It's not just their French names. Uh, I mean, they honestly are probably their French names, but is that still not a nickname technically? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, I see. So it doesn't count. It does not count, no. That's why IDM won, because I think the last time IDM nicknamed his Pokemon, he lost. It's true. Uh, but this, of course, lines IDM right up to face off against Kemeth. And that's going to be a big match. And I'm very excited to see that one. Of course, we have another uh, big match right after that. We do have Scoots versus Vincent. Another really uh big match and we're looking to see who makes it uh we're gonna have a live stream special uh coming up for that i think we're gonna have probably another video uh that's uh, that spoodle announce uh having the actual date of when that's gonna go up but that's gonna be exciting because that day not only are those uh battles going to occur the next battle afterwards is going to occur as well so these individuals so idm had to prep a team not just for kemeth but also for scoots and for vincent so they have three teams to set up and get ready for the final match of playoffs for season four of double dip draft yeah it's gonna be a great couple of matches you know these players are all very strong their teams are you know, out and ready for blood. Uh, who do you think, you know, in in your in your professional opinion, who uh, yes, who's I your agree. money on? My professional opinion. My money yeah. is like I want to say IDM, but I do <laughs> know Kemeth's done really well this season. Honestly. Yeah, I do think I do think Kemeth is in a very strong spot. Yeah, and. I think, honestly, I think he could do it. I think Kemeth can do it. Now, I would love, and this is just me, I would love to see Scoots do it. After making mm -hmm. playoffs every single time and with him advancing to the next round and beating Aurora, who has done stunning this season, I think it would be really cool to see Scoots move on to the finals as well. It would definitely be very nice to see Scoots finally get that W yeah. that he's been looking for for so long. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But then he might retire, so maybe he should lose. But <laughs> I, I don't think Scoots would retire after no, one dub. probably not. Uh, either no. way, though, insane, exciting matches are coming up. We will have a video later uh, detailing probably the announcement of when the live stream is. But if you've been enjoying Double Dip Draft, don't forget to join in on that final playoff match. It's going to be pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's about all we got to uh, talk about today, right? Uh, I think so, unless you got someone else. No, uh, I don't got anything else. We had some exciting, fun matches. We had a great time watching, seeing these players perform at some of their best. Um, and doing really good. It's just now a matter of who's going to take the W. Who's going to go for the gold, you know? Mm -hmm. It's... It's honestly anyone's game at this point. I think all yeah. four of these players have the potential to just, you know, take it all home. Um, yeah. I think personally, I think, you know, Kemeth has done amazing this entire season. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also think Scoots has also done quite well. Um, but, yeah. you know, it's really, uh, it's it's up in the air. It really is, and we'll have to wait and see. And until next time, thank you all so much for joining us for this wonderful season of Double Dip Draft. We're going to be signing off, but don't worry. We'll be back. Season 5 happening around the summer, I believe. But this is really early talk. So don't, don't quote me on that one. Um, but uh, stay tuned for more. Stay tuned for the live stream. Thank you so much for joining me today, by the way. Loaf of the Loaf Fill Lanterns. No problem. Almost any time. Almost any time. Absolutely. Almost. I don't want to. I don't like saying any time because like I can't do any time. You know, it's got to be almost any time. Yeah, almost any time indeed. Yeah. I mean, I'm a busy yeah. man. All right. I got. I got. I got carbs to get. All right. Yeah. You got carbs. You wouldn't download a car. No carbs. Oh carbs. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. I, some bread. For, you know. Come me. on. You know, Come on. Cars. Carbs. Honestly, when you really think about it. They're the exact same thing. It's true. All right. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining us. 
I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Don't forget to smash that like button. And punch the your computer monitor in the face. Yes, do that. Punch it. <laughs> Don't do that. Then get yourself a new monitor, then punch that one harder. There you go. That will, that will show your sign of devotion to the Double Dip Draft, and we will see you in the next season. Take care. For Goodbye. You gonna say farewell? No. Like you were. Oh, okay. No. I was gonna say for every broken monitor, we'll donate uh, one penny to the swear jar. Absolutely. We'll do it for every cell phone that flies. Yeah.